everyone and welcome back to another video. I hope you're all having a wonderful week. Today I'm sharing some of my favourite colouring tips. Colouring is hands down my favourite part of creating art. As you probably know, colouring has lots of beneficial properties and is a great way to de-stress, to relax, it's good for concentration and so on. For me though, it's quite simple. I just love colour and I love colouring because it makes me the happiest. Over the years I've come up with a way of choosing and working with colours and I thought it would be fun to share some of the things that I've learned along the way and how I go about choosing colours now. It is important to say, just before I move on, that all artists work differently and what works for me might not work for you. All I'm doing here is sharing what I find helpful and if, by listening, you agree with some of the things that I say and also find them helpful, then that's really great and I'm thrilled. But if not, well, it's not a big deal, because as I said, no two people are the same, and the only way you can find your way of working is to experiment until you discover what feels right for you. I've tried to make these tips as broad as possible so that they can apply to whatever medium you're using. I'm primarily a pattern designer, so 90% of what I draw are patterns, but I also do illustrations and fan art, so I think these tips can apply to whatever type of drawing you're working on. This is really a general colouring tips video, which you can take and hopefully apply to whatever creative project you're doing. This is the most important tip for me. Unless you're going to be using every single colour in the spectrum and you're making a rainbow effect, then I really do feel that using a limited colour palette does look the best and if sometimes I forget or I don't use a palette then I always end up disliking my piece. I think this is because using a limited colour palette can really help bring the drawing together and give it a cohesive feel and when I don't have that I feel something's lacking. I would suggest between four and seven colours on average. I tend to use five as a starting place and then add two more if the drawing is very large or detailed or sub subtract one if it's small and simple. There is one addition I do make to my rule and that's if I'm colouring people. When you colour people you end up having a load of skin tones so I don't include those tones in my palette. I like to keep them separate and have two palettes. Skin tones on one and then my normal six colours to cover everything else in the drawing like the hair, the clothes, the background etc. And then if I'm drawing several characters together, I sometimes have a palette per person, so each person has their skin tone and their colour palette. As you can see, I have to adapt my process and it's definitely not set in stone, but a limited colour palette starting with five colours is my basic starting place and then I just add on there depending what I'm doing. The dominant colour is the colour that you use most in a drawing. It's the colour that you colour the largest parts with, it's the colour that pops out the most and when people look at your work it will be the colour that they remember. So for instance this piece, they'll look, people might look at this and say this is the blue pattern and this is the brown one. There are lots of other colours in it but the brown is the one that pops out the most and is the dominant one. Sometimes the dominant colour is harder to see, as in this one here, and I often like it so that you no one colour overpowers another, but still there is a dominant colour in this one and it's the green, because it's the colour that I started with. Sometimes you have more than one dominant colour, you can have several, but I always start with one colour, and it's the colour that sets up the tone and the feel of my piece. As with this one I started with a blue and I added all the other colours to it. I'm going to build up a hypothetical colour palette now just to give you an example. So the very first colour I'm going to pick here is this orange. And this shall be the dominant colour of my new colour palette. I'm now going to move on to building up the rest of my palette. The next thing I always do is to add a darker tone. 
and this I do even if I'm doing a monochromatic or a pastel piece where all the colours need to be very light I will still include one colour that's very slightly darker than all the others it doesn't have to be a lot darker but just enough for you to tell so this sepia is going to be my darkest colour in the palette some of the colours complement each other some of them clash the important thing is that they're all going to look nice once they've been put down The last colour that I pick is a very light or a neutral shade and this colour will help bring highlights to my colouring and to help the rest of the colours pop. Some of my go-to neutral colours are light grey, putty, beige, yellow or a very light version of one of the colours I already have in the pattern. And don't forget that white is also a good uh, highlight colour. As you can see with this one again, I've used, I've left the background white and this really helps the rest of the colours pop out. I think I'm going to use the putty colour again because I know it will work well with the orange, the green and the pink. It's very important that your lightest colour or your neutral shade blends very well with the rest of your palette. This next tip is so simple, I almost didn't include it, but I figured I might as well. Always test your colours. Test to make sure they go together, test to make sure that they're accurate, because sometimes the label, the colour label, isn't actually the colour that's inside. Test to make sure that the paper's going to stand up to whatever your medium you're putting onto it. Test that your materials blend well together or that, that they go together if you're going to be using multimedia. Just test every step of the way, it doesn't ever hurt. If you're having one of those days where you're stuck, the colours aren't coming, your drawing is staying blank and every time you try and make a colour palette it's just not looking right and I know exactly what that's like because I have those days as well. You need a little kick of inspiration and there are some tips that I have for finding some inspiration. You can look on some websites that specialise in colour palettes. Adobe Colour and Design Seeds are two very good websites and they're full of beautiful colour palettes and on Adobe Colour you can make your own so I do suggest you have a look at those. Another fun tip is one I heard from another YouTuber, uh, Tori from Juicy Ink. She suggests that you look in your cupboard and you make a colour palette based on your clothes or what you're wearing and that's something that's actually also fun and a bit of a challenge as well so that's a nice idea. I keep this little book on my art desk at all times and if I'm ever stuck or I need just to be inspired I look at it and it's called Colour Feast, it's a visual colour palette reference for creatives and it's a lovely little book, square book and I could easily fit this in my handbag or backpack and carry it around with me but it's full of gorgeous photographs and each photo each page has a photograph and the colour palette down the side of it so I may not have all those colours in Copic markers or pencils but I will be able to see that be inspired and build my colour palette from there and this is this is one of my essentials for my art desk Many of the drawings that I draw have backgrounds and borders and I have quite a simple process for when I choose the colours for these. Backgrounds, it's either the lightest or the darkest colour. In this example here I've chosen the lightest colour on my palette and in this example I've chosen the darkest. And it is important, or at least a very good idea, to choose the background colour at the start of your colour picking process. Just because if you're going to use a dark colour for the background, then you want to make sure all the rest of the colours in your palette are going to be a lot lighter and that they're going, there's going to be a contrast so that they pop out. And don't forget that you can always use white as your background as well, which is what I normally do. 
because doing it this way does use up a lot of ink so white is always a great background colour. As for borders it's fairly simple. Borders are always my darkest colour because a border as in this drawing of the Grinch has to frame the drawing so I put it in the darkest colour on my palette and in this case it's black. When you come down to starting to lay the colours, the biggest tip to keep in mind is to make sure you spread your colours evenly. And what I tend to do is I start either from the centre or from one corner, whatever works best for the drawing that you're colouring in, and to just to move one little bit at a time, colour in a section, and make sure you include all the colours, and then just work outwards basically, making sure you incorporate all the colours, and constantly perhaps turn the drawing around, put it a little bit away from you, just to just see how the colours are panning out. With a pattern this is particularly important because you really don't want to have a lump of one colour in one place and not have it spread evenly. Unless of course you're going for that look, but if you're not then spreading colours evenly is important and it's true even if you're working on an illustration like this one. I made sure that the red is spread throughout the drawing as it's her, the dominant colour on Wonder Woman's costume. With drawings like this I tend to actually start with the face, I do all the skin, then I go to the hair and then I do the rest of it but still the colours still have to be spread evenly even with a simple drawing like this. Spreading the colours evenly helps to give your drawing a more professional look, um, it helps to bring it together and it helps to look more cohesive and thought about. Adding a little bit of basic shading is a great way to enhance your drawings and make them look a little bit, a bit more professional and just to give them some extra dimension in life. Now this isn't going to be a huge shading tutorial, that's a whole other video, but I'm just going to show you a couple of ways, uh, simple, very simple little things that I do just to make my pattern stand out a bit more. Now you could apply this technique to other types of drawings but I am particularly focusing on sort of shapes here and how, what I do to give my patterns a little bit more dimension. One of the things you can do is to shade and here I'm just simply using the same pen and adding a tiny bit of shading. You could use a different pen, one of the other pens in the colour palette, a darker shade, there are lots of ways you can add but this is one very simple way, if you've got a shape like this, just to add some a little bit of shadow to the top and the bottom of the shape. And if this particular shape is in a ring or it, it's a border, it will, end, it will end up giving the whole thing a lot more dimension. Of course, another thing you can do is to just do one end. So, but do it higher up. So just do like this and then really darken up the bottom. I just go around one side like this. So you're sort of shading like this along one side. And then of course the other thing is to shade all the way around the outside. And you can add as many layers as your paper will allow. And they're just three very very simple ways that I add a little bit of shading and as I said this is not a shading tutorial this is just just tiny little tips on adding a little bit of extra dimension because sometimes if you're coloring you don't want to spend hours and hours building up shadows and layers you just but you might want to add just a little something and so this is what I do So my final tip here is don't give up on a piece. It's really easy to do and I've done this so many times where I have started colouring and then I've added usually a particularly strong colour, I've just added this red and now I don't like it anymore. Even though I tested the colours, I did a colour swatch, I did everything, 
How I normally do, I now don't like this, and I think it's completely ruined the piece. My immediate reaction is, okay, I'm going to tear it up. I'm going to tear it up, and I'm going to start all over again. But I mustn't do that, because what is going to happen 90% of the time is that once you've distributed, or once I've distributed that colour, and I've got all the rest of my colours in and I've finished it, it will work. Somehow, it comes together and it works. And I've had this happen to me, so whatever happens, don't give up on a piece. Because, as I said, it's likely to just come together and somehow magically work at the end. If, on the off chance, it doesn't work and you get to the end and you still think it looks horrible, then I bet there'll be somebody, probably someone you know, that you can give it to who will like those colours. The last thing I wanted to say was that art, drawing, colouring, creating, whatever creative project you're doing is meant to be enjoyable and meant to be fun, so don't stress out too much about it. I hope I was able to put my process into at least understandable English. It was very hard to try and uh, put into words all the things that I, a lot of the things that I do a bit more instinctively when I'm working normally. I hope it was helpful. If you have any questions, feel free to post them in the comments below and I will try my best to answer them. Remember to subscribe if you'd like to see more. I put out a new video every week and I will see you next time.